Let's head over to Leanne, uh, one of my favorite segments, of course. <laughs> well, Natalie Graham, talking about wine. Graham, what we're about to do could count as Olympic, mm -hmm. uh, I think. Uh, we are about to explore 11 wines, 15 grapes, but essentially these aren't your ordinary grapes. They're the tricky to pr pronounce ones. See, even that exactly. was tricky. <laughs> and that's before you've had a glass of that's wine. Right. Wine writer extraordinaire, Natalie McLean. We had sort of a, we cooked up a fun little idea. Yes. And it was to see if we could take the most difficult to pronounce wine names and give them a go so that uh, you know we know how to say them if we're in a restaurant or in the liquor store because there are so many wines that get ignored because people just don't want to say the names. Now there's a study. Uh, is it at Brock? Yes. yes, a brilliant researcher there, Dr. Antonio Mantanakis. That sounds Even like a great name. wine. <laughs> yeah, I know. She's, she's just brilliant in terms of the research she's doing on consumers and wine habits and wine buying. And what she discovered in a laboratory test with 50 participants is that consumers were willing to pay more and perceive the wines better if they had a more complicated name. Now, they didn't have to pronounce them, so they didn't have to order them in a restaurant, but if they were sort of gazing at labels, they perceived the difficult names as better wines. I'd almost pay you not to have to say them on TV. <laughs> but we are actually going to uh, offer a little nod to Audrey Hepburn and yes. Hero Tool and my fair lady, of course, based on Pygmalion. Let's take a little look at how Audrey had to struggle as will be the Eliza Doolittles. <laughs> Here's our first clip. All right, Eliza, say it again. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. <laughs> didn't I say that? No, Eliza, you didn't sigh that. You didn't even say that. <laughs> Of course, we both love this I film know. and uh, the adorable. novel on which it is based, Pygmalion. Mm -hmm. uh, but, Natalie, let's take a little look. After a bit of refinement, so for us, yes. time spent with wine pronouncer or my time spent with Natalie <laughs> McLean, this is how it could all sound. Right. Right you are. By George, she's got it. Okay. <laughs> the rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. I think she's got it. I think she's got it. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. By George, she's got Don't it. Don't worry, we are not going to sing. <laughs> it comes with a wine <laughs> warning. Well, you're welcome to, yeah. Natalie. I promise you, <laughs> I won't. <laughs> so we, you have chosen some tricky to pronounce wines. Yes. Yes. One of the trickiest. And in two and a half to three minutes, we're going to help you with your pronunciation. All of our pronouncers are in capital. Uh, they're in uppercase right. on the screen. But we're but not going to shout the, the wine names. <laughs> that <laughs> no. might seem what we're doing, but no. <laughs> Touche, so yes. to speak. So the first wine of which we speak okay. is Peter Lehman from Australia. There are four grapes in this. It's a real mouthful. But first we've got Semillon. So you might think it's Semillon or Semillon or whatever, but it's Semillon. Semillon. There we go. The next, next one, this is a classic, and we're always joking about this, Leanne, but mm -hmm. it's Gewürztraminer. Bless you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Gewürztraminer. And a lot of these uh, grape and wine names are European, so Spanish or Italian or French, and that's why we as Anglophones, especially in North America, find it hard to get our tongues around these names. Well, I think we've all purchased one or, one or three of these bottles of wine, but we've perhaps not pronounced it in the right way. Exactly, uh, and we've also got Pinot Gris in this, I should say, because it, it looks like Pinot Gris, but it's a Pinot Gris. And then we've got Muscat, which should be fairly easy to say. Um, so let's keep moving along since we want to get through let's these. Let's move on to the Riesling. Riesling. Now, this is hard because we often reverse the I's and E's. So it looks like Riesling. Everyone says Riesling or Riedel glasses, you know, Riedel glasses, but it's actually Riedel or Riesling. Riesling. And uh, also on this is an indication of the grape's um, ripeness, and that is Spatzlese. Okay, that's a Yes, sorry, did I spit on <laughs> A little bit. Oh, okay, you, you did a little spit with the <laughs> Spitzlese. <laughs> Just yeah. trying to enunciate, my dear. <laughs> okay, we're going to move right along. I love the name of this wine, Connoisseur. They gave us a break with the winery's name, but not so much the grape. So this is... Viognier. Very good, Leanne, my Eliza. <laughs> okay, Viognier, and we're going to keep going down the line here. I should I, know this one off by heart. Sauvignon Blanc. Very good. <laughs> but where would you like your emphasis? I'd like it Sauvignon Blanc. That's pretty even, actually. And um, the, the only mistake we tend to make with this one is saying Sauvignon Blanc. 
you don't have to pronounce that last C. And the winery is Arazarus, but I won't make you say that. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, we should say that it's sort of even like the wine, the pronunciation. Exactly. So, suave. 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 It reminds me of that song. So I'm just going to, we, we've skipped over here Fumé Blanc, but we'll go on to Suave, and that's a, the Italian. You'll notice it's by Massi. Again, there's that switch between the I and the E. We would think it's Massi, but it's Massi. Massi. So that's how you can think of a lot of these tricky ones. How about Orvieto? Orvieto. Oh, now, you roll the R a little <laughs> bit more. Roll you, the R. You don't have to, but, um, you know, again, we're tr just trying to get our tongues around this as, as North American Anglo speakers. Tell us about that wine. So these, both of these are crisp. In fact, the three that are on the camera right now are all very crisp, uh, dry, refreshing summer whites. Serve them well chilled, fresh seafood and shellfish. And next up, uh, Pinot Grigio. Now very we should good. say that our pronouncer isn't right on with this because this would look like we would say Pinot Grigio, but it is... Pinot Grigio. Grigio. I'm just throwing in the Italian there. I don't have an Italian bone in my body, but you know, a <laughs> lot of... grape in your yeah, fridge. Yeah, exactly. Well, people might look at this, you know, especially novices and say it's Pinot Grigio, but no, it's Pinot Grigio. So and moving on to Austria. Uh, the Austrian is Grunerweltliner. I'm so proud of you. Uh, no, <laughs> I, I had the help. Great. So Gruner Grunerweltliner. Grunerweltliner. There's that U. And but what should we know if we order this wine? Again, it's a crisp, fresh whites. We're doing all whites to start with, and, and you'll notice a lot of these European names, especially Northern European names, are a tongue twister, but they're worth exploring. Um, and if we keep going, we're now on to Greece. We have to go to Greece and actually yes. finish these very quickly because we're okay. almost out of time. So now let me have you do the tongue twisters really, really fast. Okay, Assyrtiko, Assyrtiko. And there's been a revolution in Greek wines. They're so refreshing, so good. It's worth learning how to say them. And the last one we've got there is Moscofiliro. Moscofiliro. There we go. And I need to know about the Moscofiliro. Oh, okay. Well, you know, you could have have a, a traditional Greek taverna dinner, fresh seafood, maybe some olives, uh, some strong cheeses, some toasted nuts. Then you're just looking out at the nice turquoise blue Mediterranean. Pour yourself a glass of this, well chilled, you're all set. This is why she's a wine writer, Graham. <laughs> and what's so fantastic is we will have all of these pronouncers on our website. So the next time you head to the LCBO, you'll just sound oh so shishi, and you'll yes. be able to say the rain in Spain. Oh, <laughs> Nothing wrong with going long when you're talking about wine.